We have a really exciting video today about DaVinci Resolve and the color management process. You have to go and create hundreds of nodes just to do color space transforms. So how to make those easier and quicker and how to do it properly in DaVinci Resolve. This video is not for the absolute beginner. You should have some knowledge of DaVinci Resolve to understand the full process of what we're doing. However, you can still learn some very valuable information with the color grading process. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our project settings. There's a few ways that you can do that. First, number one, up here, you can click file. Then you can come down here to project settings, or you could press shift nine on the keyboard shortcuts. If you look down here in the right bottom corner, you will see that there's a little gear icon next to this home button. And that is for your project settings. So just go ahead and you can click that. This is the way I like to do it. And then we have these different settings here. This is for the master settings. Uh, what we're going to do for this is color management. So we click color management. Then we're going to come over here. You should be set here on Color Science DaVinci YRGB. What this means is that you are going to handle all of the color management. So whatever you shot, you're going to edit all of the color, and that's the way DaVinci has it set up for you by default. However, we can change that, and we can click here on the Color Science, and we're going to come down here to DaVinci YRGB Color Manage. Click here. This will pop up with automatic color management, but that's not what we want to do. So we're going to click this now and get rid of that. So let's look here under color processing. It's set at SDR Rec 709. So let's come down and we're going to hit custom. From here, we can make our color space transforms without having to create nodes. So if you're using a single type of camera, like I'm using in this video is the Canon C-Log 3, I will be able to just edit all of my clips using that. So here, as you can see, we have input color space, which is not going to be Rec. 709 because I'm shooting with the Canon. We're going to scroll to Canon, Cinema Gamut Canon Log 3. I click that. So that's my input color space. Timeline color space is still set at Rec. 709 scene. We don't want that. What we're going to do is we're going to go to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. So what this is doing is changing the timeline color space to the DaVinci Wide Gamut, giving us DaVinci Resolve's best color space editing area. So we can make our nodes and we make our adjustments. It'll be through that. Then we're going to output it through the Rec. 709. As you can see here, the output is set to Rec. 709 scene, which can work depending on what you're doing. However, for my monitor, I'm going to use a Gamma 2.2. So for you, maybe you're using an Apple monitor. If you're using an Apple monitor, what you're going to want to do is click here, and you're going to go to Rec. 709A. Rec. 709A is for Apple. That is the best output color space for that monitor. For my monitor, I'm going to come up here to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. So once I do that, I select that. Now I have my... DaVinci YRB color managed, custom setting, input color space for my camera, timeline color space is the DaVinci wide gamut. My output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. Now I'm going to click save and you can watch what happens. Let's move this over. So now let's watch what happens here when I click save. As you can see, everything changed. So let's see what happens with the color management that we had just done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this. I'm going to bypass color management and we see how flat that has become. So this is what it's like without the color management and this is what it's like with it. So now I do not have to make any nodes, adding any color space transforms. They're already all done. Okay, so I loaded three different clips in here. One was from my C-Log. The second one was already a Rec. 709 from a Canon camera. And the third one is from my iPhone, all of which are different color spaces. So if you have a video and you're editing with multiple things, but most of it is a C-Log or maybe you're using your Sony S-Log, what you're going to want to do is do the same thing. However, you're going to have to bypass the color space. So let's look at how to do that. 
As you can see here, this one's already there. That's my cannon. Now I come over here and this has gotten totally messed up due to the fact that we are now adding that Canon Log 3 LUT on there. So let's right click this and we're going to go right here to Bypass Color Management. And as you can see, it has brought it back to what was already shot in the camera. So we can maybe have the same problem regarding this cell phone footage. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to right click this. We're going to go to Bypass Color Management. Not a whole lot has changed. However, it did make some difference. Undo that and we can look here at the histogram and see if you see any difference. As you can see, there was a big difference on our histogram here. So let's do that one more time and you see. Go back here, check that again. Bypass Color Management. That's what it had done there. With that out of the way, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Chad, and I do video editing using DaVinci Resolve. I make systems and processes to help your editing workflow run absolutely smooth. So if this information that you're getting right now seems valuable to you, please hit the like button and subscribe. It'll really help out the channel. Okay, I'm going to show you another way of doing the color space transform where you edit that directly on the color page. Okay, so we're going to open our project settings again, just to show you what it's like. So here, under color management, check that. You see, I am back here with the DaVinci YRGB. As you remember, what this means is that I'm going to manage all of the color. So let's take a look at what that is. So here, on the color page, we're going to see how the three of them are, you know, these two are already added, and we see this one is not. So to get this one to have a color space transform, what we should do is add some serial nodes. So for what we're going to do with this one is we're going to add some nodes and we're going to create a color space transform. If you're going to do any noise reduction, leave the first node alone and save that for later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new serial node. So make sure that you have this one selected and you can press option S. And as soon as you press Option S, a new node appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Option S again. And now I have the two nodes. So I'm going to bring this one over here. What you should always do is get used to labeling your nodes. So this one should be Noise Reduction. Here, I'm going to node label this one, Color Space Transform. My third node, I'm going to change that label to color space transform out. So now we have our nodes, but we must come over here into our effects. So you're going to want to click on your effects under your library, and you're going to go to resolve effects color. And underneath that, you will see color space transform. You can drag that and drop that onto your nodes. So there's one. And two. Okay, so now that we have the color space transform in, it's selected. We're going to take this input color space, Canon Cinema Gamut input gamma. We need to go to the Canon Log 3. Now we want output color space. We're going to change this into DaVinci Wide Gamut. And we're going to change this into DaVinci Intermediate. Now you can see we have a totally flat image work with. Before we get to that, we need to see what it's going to look like after we do the editing. So we're going to go to our color space transform out, click on this. Now we need to do our input color space. The new input color space from this node to this node is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. So as that's coming into this one, we need to go DaVinci Intermediate. So now, as you can see, it just transformed that color so much. However, we're not finished with that because we want to do our, you, you can leave it on your timeline if you have your timeline set up or you can give it full control. So let's go to Rec 709. Then we're going to go to Output Gamma and we're going to go down to say Gamma 2.2, 2.4. Whatever your monitor is calibrated for, you know, I'm going to use 2.2. That works well with my monitor. So I'm going with Gamma 2.2. Now I have the output. When I make any more editing, I'm going to do that through nodes that are between the color space transforms. 
So let me just create a few of them to show you what it's like. So here I've created three serial nodes, all have no label. Okay, so for this first node, I'm going to label this one. So that way I can change the temperature. If I want to make an adjustment on the temperature, I'm going to do that here. On this one, I need to do my exposure. So exposure, I'm going to just make a simple adjustment here using this just for the sake of this video. I'm not going to do too much. As you can see, that changed the contrast and the color quite well. I'm not going to get too much into that. I'm just showing you the direction of this. Then I'm going to go here. I'm going to do this one will be my color. So then I want to make any color adjustments. I can do all of that through here. Say maybe I want to give a little color boost and maybe, uh, maybe add a little saturation. And then I have my color. So that's quite simple regarding them. Okay, so that's how you get your node structure to flow through and go out. I'd like to know about your color space transforms. What do you like to do? And maybe what kind of things would you like to see? Do you go for a film look? Have you created your own custom LUTs? What are some of the problems that you've had on the color page? Please let me know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do in the upcoming videos.